This is Eric Chappell, Civil Community Evangelist for Autodesk, and I want to talk to you today about what's new in Autodesk InfraWorks 360. I'd like to break the new features and capabilities of InfraWorks 360 into three categories. First, I'll show you how they allow you to get more information from your model. Then we'll talk about how they allow you to satisfy more design and analysis requirements for your projects. And finally, we'll talk about features that let you get your work done faster. Let's talk about how these new features allow you to get more information from your model. With InfraWorks 360, you can now use annotations to learn important information about your design while you work. For example, if I click this component road, you'll see annotations appear showing me key elevations along the road centerline. And if I switch to plan view, you'll see similar information now relating to the plan geometry of the centerline. In this case, the station of the beginning of this curve. If I move to the end of this design, you'll notice that I have a turning lane, and I may be interested in knowing how long that turning lane is, in this case roughly 500 feet, and it has a transition of roughly 62 feet. And we can also get information about roadside grading. If I go to this area of my design, I have an area where there are several grading regions, and if I click one of them, the annotations show me the length of the transition in this case, as well as the stations where it starts and ends. And finally, if I have easements, right-of-ways, or parcels in my model, I can click on those objects to learn information about their dimensions. For example, if I click this tangent, I can see the length of the tangent as well as its offset from the road centerline. And if I click the curve, I can see its length, its radius, as well as the beginning and ending stations, and even symbols that indicate that it's tangent at either endpoint. Why are these annotations so important? They allow you to stay informed while you design so that you can make good decisions very quickly. With InfraWorks 360, calculating road quantities is now more powerful and flexible than ever. The software now considers bridges, intersections, and roundabouts when calculating quantities. You'll notice that when I access Earthwork settings, I now have the option of including intersection and roundabout, as well as bridge information in the quantities report. And if I run a detailed report, you'll now see information pertaining to bridges, roundabouts, and intersections in the report. Another additional capability that I have is when running a report, I can now ask the software to limit the report to a certain station range. Here I'll say to calculate the quantities from 0 to 10 plus 0, 0. When I run the report, the values will now only reflect what's between those two stations. Why is it important to have additional capabilities when calculating road quantities? It's all about staying informed while you design so that you can make smart decisions quickly to arrive at the best design in the least amount of time possible. A simple but powerful tool in this latest release of InfraWorks 360 is the 2D Distance and Slope tool. To demonstrate this tool, I'm going to switch to Engineering View so that we can see better through the terrain. I'll go ahead and launch the tool, click this low-lying area, and then move my cursor to the top of the hill. Here you can see three pieces of information that are shared. One is the horizontal distance, which in this case is 896.3 feet, the vertical distance of 313.8, and also the slope between those two points, 35.01%. A very handy way to not just analyze the terrain, but perhaps the distance from the top of a bridge to a low-lying area or something along those lines. Why is this tool important? It allows you to be more informed to make better design decisions more quickly. Now let's talk about how InfraWorks 360 allows you to satisfy more design and analysis requirements for your projects. With InfraWorks 360, you can now split roadside grading to create multiple zones. Let's see how this works. In the case of this bridge area, I might want to change the slope and the material in this location close to the bridge. To do that, I simply click the roadside grading area, right-click and pick Split Grading. Next, I'll choose a location, 
where I want the split to take place. Now in the newly created zone, I can assign a different material and a different slope. You can see here that I also need a transition to make the difference in slope a little more smooth. So I'll simply right click the point where the two areas meet and select Add Transition. I'll pick a location for the end of the transition and InfraWorks 360 will do the rest of the work to make the transition smooth from one zone to the next. Once the grading zones and transitions are in place, it's very easy to make modifications to them. I can click and drag them graphically to change their positions, or I can even enter in a station. Why is it important to be able to split roadside grading? It allows me greater flexibility to meet more of my road design project needs. With InfraWorks 360, working with right-of-ways, parcels, and easements is easier and more powerful than ever. First of all, the right-of-ways are now shown within the road cross-sections, and you can see as I move the focus point of my cross-section view, the right-of-way marker moves in and out, reflecting the true width of the right-of-way, letting me know whether or not the roadside grading is extending beyond the right-of-way. Some other powerful capabilities of parcels, easements, and right-of-ways are the dimensioning and editing capabilities. I can click on a component of a parcel or right-of-way in this case and see important dimensions about that line segment or arc. I can also easily insert or convert arcs and line segments within the geometry of these objects. For example, I can add a curve by simply clicking the point and saying convert to arc. I can even specify the radius for the new arc to give it exactly the geometry that I choose. Here we see an extra curve in the right-of-way geometry that I can easily remove after converting it to a line feature. As you can see, the editing of these legal boundaries has become easier than ever before in this latest release of InfraWorks 360. Why are these new legal boundary capabilities important? Well, the annotation and the visibility in the cross-section view allows you to stay more informed, while the easier editing allows you to meet more project needs faster than ever. With InfraWorks 360, you can now do more than ever before with flood simulation. The software now supports multiple inflow locations so that you can analyze and simulate more flood scenarios. It also supports elevation versus time and discharge versus time as inflow inputs. Why are these new flood simulation capabilities important? They allow you to analyze more flood simulation scenarios and more types of input to satisfy more project requirements. And finally, let's talk about how this new release of InfraWorks 360 lets you get your work done faster. With InfraWorks 360, you can now associate edit mode with your views. What I mean by that is for conceptual view, for example, I can click the drop down for the view, go to the settings, and decide whether edit mode is turned on or off. You'll notice that it's turned off for my current view, which is conceptual view. What that means is if I click a road or an intersection or a bridge, I don't see the editing gizmos typically associated with editing that object. If I switch to Engineering View and I click on one of those objects, you'll notice that I do see the selections and gizmos that allow me to make edits. And that's because if I go to the settings for Engineering View, I'll see that Edit Mode is turned on. So now I can control whether or not Edit Mode is activated simply by switching views, meaning that I don't have to manage that manually as I work within the model. Why is that important? It just simply allows you to work more efficiently by not having to manage that setting manually. In InfraWorks 360, you can work more efficiently than ever on your bridges and get to detailed design more quickly. By using the Apply to Next Selection feature, I can select this pier, right click and pick Apply to Next Selection, and simply transfer those properties over to the next pier in line. Of course, as always, I can also apply to all peers in the bridge model.
This also works for girders. and even for pier foundations. And I can also use the all pier foundations for this option as well. I can also increase my productivity by storing the bridge configuration as an assembly. I'll select the bridge, right click and say add to library. I'll give it a name. And now I can apply that assembly to another bridge in the model. And just like that, all of the piers, pier foundations, girder types, and other configurations are applied to this bridge. And finally, I have more ways to get to detailed design from my preliminary bridge design in InfraWorks 360. I can now select the bridge, right click, and send to Revit either as Revit families or as direct shapes. Why are all these bridge features important? They allow you to work more efficiently and move to detailed design more quickly. In this latest release of InfraWorks 360, we see a new type of tree called an adaptive tree. And in this current view, it's the tree that you see on the left. The one on the right is the same style of tree that we've seen in previous releases. What's unique about an adaptive tree is that it has levels of detail that are automatically assigned as you zoom in and out of the model. So if I zoom in really closely on this tree, you can see that it's very detailed and very realistic. But as I zoom out, the tree actually changes. And unless you're really paying attention, you don't even notice. But as I'm zooming out, the tree is becoming less and less detailed. And an interesting way to pick up on this is to look at the shadow of the tree. You can see as the shadow is becoming more sparse for this tree, but for the old style of tree, it's not. Now why is this important? It really helps to improve the performance of your model because as you can imagine, hundreds and hundreds or even thousands of trees with this level of detail could really bog down your model depending on the specs of your computer. But if you're zoomed way out in the model to where you can see all hundreds or thousands of those trees at once, you really don't need to see that much detail. So let's strip that detail away and give the computer some space to operate a little more freely. So that's what adaptive trees are all about. And why they're important is they improve the performance of the model without sacrificing the visual quality of the model. Now that you've seen all these exciting new features in this latest update to InfraWorks 360, how do you get your hands on it? There are several ways to do that. First is check your Autodesk desktop app for an InfraWorks 360 update. Or you can go directly to manage.autodesk.com, log into your account, and check for the download there. And finally, if you're not currently an InfraWorks 360 customer, you can try out InfraWorks 360 by going to the trial page at autodesk.com slash InfraWorks. However you do it, be sure to get the latest release right now so that you can take advantage of these new features that make InfraWorks 360 better than ever.